Well, meanwhile, the investigation into Russia's election meddling now has an independent special counsel. The Justice Department has appointed former FBI Director Robert Mueller to that post. He, he'll look into the Trump administration's alleged ties with Russia and interference in the 2016 presidential election. House Speaker Paul Ryan is expected to weigh in on the Justice Department's decision when he addresses the media in about 20 minutes. When the Speaker takes to that podium, we will stream it to you live. The President, meanwhile, has reacted. Where else? On Twitter, mm -hmm. yeah, quote, mm -hmm. with all the illegal acts that took place in the Clinton campaign and the Obama administration, there was never a special counsel appointed. He went on to say this is the single greatest witch hunt of a politician in American history. Let's bring in Gabe De Benedetti. He's a national political reporter for Politico, and he joins us now from the Politico newsroom in Arlington, Virginia. All right, Gabe, so the selection of Robert Mueller seems to be getting praise from both sides of the aisle, but what are we hearing from those Republicans who said a special counsel wasn't really needed for the Justice Department to take? Paul Ryan just said yesterday the current investigations were sufficient. Yeah, well, as you mentioned, obviously the president says this is all ridiculous, more or less, but there are a lot of Republicans coming out and saying, okay, fine, we have this special counsel, this is a good selection, let's move on from here, let's see what he finds. They know that this is going to be a really long process and that we're not going to see any big answers anytime soon. There are obviously some Republicans out there who are grumbling a little bit, but it's in no one's interest at this point, now that the special counsel has been named, to be saying this is a terrible idea and try and, you know, anger the special counsel. So. They are trying to move forward. A lot of them are saying, listen, this is the reality we're now living with. Well, let's move on. So the president released a rather measured statement after Mueller's appointment yesterday. But then he lashed out on Twitter this morning, calling the Russian probe the biggest witch hunt in American history. What can you read into that messaging? I suppose it's what we've seen before. Usually he sends a surrogate out with a message and then later on lashes out. But in this case, we got a formal statement. Yeah, we clearly have a pretty uh, unhappy president right now. Yesterday at the uh, Coast Guard commencement, he actually said, I've been treated worse than any other politician ever. Obviously, a lot of people would, would have a problem with that statement. But what is very telling is that we haven't seen a lot of the president's surrogates or a lot of White House officials come out because a lot of them are pretty unhappy right now, too. They don't necessarily like the way that this is going, and they really don't like the way that the president has gotten out in front of them and done his own messaging. He's a president who really likes to be his own communications director. And the answer to what is the White House message on a day-to-day -day basis is basically whatever's coming out of his Twitter feed. So it's very telling that he is the only one doing messaging on this. And it's also telling that he's furious because it really doesn't seem as if, you know, he has much confidence that he's going to be able to move forward with every one of his other priorities at this point. Uh, yeah, and I think that's the question that a lot of people uh, have right now, Gabe. Uh, you know, the president yesterday in that speech that he delivered at the Coast Guard Academy, also I think a lot of people have suggested, delivered a message to those who he feels is attacking him. He said to those cadets, uh, you've got to fight, fight, fight. Are we expected to see Donald Trump take on the critics, take on the special uh, counsel, Robert Mueller, uh, because right now he is not known as a man to back down from any kind of challenge. I think you're not likely to see uh, a lot of Republicans try and directly challenge the special counsel, especially because he is not known as a partisan figure at all. No one can tell what his political leanings have been. He served under both uh, both Republican and Democratic administrations. So uh, the idea that the White House would all of a sudden try and attack someone who's investigating it, well, they've gotten in trouble for that before, obviously, in the firing of, of James Comey. But it's a, what is very clear is that there's a lot of frustration from the White House. And I think a large part of this comes from the fact that they do now realize that they have to fight even harder to get any of their legislative uh, priorities done back on Capitol Hill just because this cloud is now looming over them. So meanwhile, Gabe, the New York Times is now reporting that the Trump transition team knew in January that Michael Flynn was under federal investigation for lobbying on behalf of Turkey. In fact, what the New York Times is reporting is that Michael Flynn told them he was perfectly honest about uh, what was going on. What questions do you still have about Flynn's hiring and handling of that? 
lots of questions mm -hmm. are raised by this report, uh, and and uh, you can expect that the special counsel will be diving straight into this report. Question number one is: So why did they still hire him? Obviously, President Trump feels strongly about Michael Flynn, who named he named as his national security advisor and held him in that position for a little bit. Um, but the question is, especially because Flynn is is under investigation for his ties not only to Turkey but to Russia as well. The question is, why did you keep him around mm -hmm. if you knew that he was under this investigation and that he had these influences? And what did he do once he was actually in office? Because remember, he had access to a huge amount of the country's national security information, including a lot of stuff that, you know, most military folks have no idea about. And Abe, uh, Gabe, sorry, <laughs> adding insult to injury, the Washington Post is now reporting that a month before the president clinched the nomination, House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy told a room full of Republicans that Vladimir Putin was paying Donald Trump. He has since come out and said it was a bad joke. Right. What do you make of it? Well, everyone who was involved in this is saying it was a bad joke, and, and by all accounts, it was said in a jesting manner. The, the transcript does have the word laughter in it a lot. That said, this is a great indication of how fragile, how delicate everything is right now on Capitol Hill, particularly within the Republican Party. McCarthy is seen as a very close ally of President Trump. The two of them actually get along. But for him to go out and say this, and then to actually have their spokespeople, his spokespeople and Paul Ryan's, deny it to the Post before being presented with a recording that showed that they actually did say it shows that this is really everyone's walking on eggshells here. No one really wants to anger the White House. But at the same time, there's a lot of distrust going around. So the president will depart on his uh, first foreign trip as commander in chief. That's going to be happening tomorrow. Probably a good time for him to maybe get out of town for a little bit and take a break from Washington, D.C. But how crucial is this trip going to be for the administration? Yeah, the reality is that he's not going to be able to escape any of the scandals that are unfolding back in Washington because in this environment, they're going to follow him no matter what. And he's stepping into some of the most difficult uh, environments possible. He's going to be in Europe talking to people about the EU. He's going to Saudi Arabia. He's going to Israel. He's going to the Vatican. These are not exactly light topics. In another world, he could have done his first foreign trip to, a, to a, one of the United States' closest allies where there weren't big geopolitical tensions that he's been stepping into the middle of, but that's not his style. So while he has the world seemingly going at him in Washington, he's leaving and seeing the rest of the world, but he's not going to friendly places necessarily. He's going to extremely fraught places, uh, and we're going to just have to see how he handles this. And Gabe, I want to ask you a question uh, on a story that's been trending right now from Politico on your website. Uh, the headline, Trump weighs downsizing Spicer's public role. There's been a lot of talk about that. You even in your initial comments said uh, that the president is really in charge of the messaging. It's been very difficult for his surrogates on the communications team to get that messaging out because when they do, uh, the next day or a couple of hours later, or a tweet they're, later. Uh, they're a tweet later, they're undermined by the president of the United States. Uh, and many reporters have started to question whether anybody can believe what comes from that White House press briefing. Uh, so what are you hearing about that? Yeah, that's exactly right. I think an important thing to remember here is that the reason that President Trump rose to where he is and rose to where he was in the business world, a lot of people believe at least, is that he's a master brander and he has always had a lot of uh, uh, suspicion towards people that say that they're other communications geniuses because he's really the one who has been behind a lot of this, a lot of the bluster, a lot of the headlines. Uh, and in the White House, obviously, he has on many occasions directly contradicted the people who are, who are paid to do his messaging for him. So yes, we are hearing that there's a bit of dissatisfaction with the Daily Spicer show. You know, this has <laughs> become a huge appointment viewing for people, which has never happened before with a White House press briefing. And you know, the president is basically saying, what's the point of doing this if it's not advancing my message and it's not making things better for me? So we may see a shakeup at some point soon, but I would caution and just say that we've heard that there are going to be shakeups before. This one seems Seems more real than previous ones, but you know this is a very mercurial, mercurial president who likes people and then doesn't like people and then likes them again. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Politico's Gabe Di Benedetti. Thank you so much, Gabe. Thank you.